Thank you. It's getting close to Hanukkah time now, and for a selection in Hebrew, we turn to a beloved tune, Hava Nashira. The lyrics say simply, come, let us sing, sing praise to the Lord. Similar sentiments in Hebrew appear all over the Psalms that form part of the liturgy traditionally prayed three times a day. This beautiful three-part canon has become a staple of children's choirs over the last hundred years or so, and it's taken on a mythology that it's an Israeli folk song. However, some people say it's actually by a 15th century Flemish composer, Johannes Achigam, with the Hebrew words being added much later in the 19th century by German Reformed Jews, who it must be said were adopting at the time more church-like habits like choirs and organ playing. How do we really know? Well, our friend Neil Ginsburg, a composer in New York whose works we have performed in the past, summed it up well when we asked him about this, maybe a little mystery is okay. That's true, especially at this time of year. Here is Hava Nashira. Writing in many styles from Renaissance to Gospel. 
He has a deep sense of what choirs can do well. He even added a second verse of original new lyrics propelling the story along. And, like Holst, Victor Johnson repeats the beloved words at the end, I will give my heart. So much. Okay, get your tap and feed ready for this next one. A gentleman named R. Fisher Boyce wrote Beautiful Star of Bethlehem while the family was living on a Middle Tennessee dairy farm. He lived in the Plainview community about two or three miles from what is now the Interstate 24 Buchanan Road exit. The songwriter's son, the late Franklin Boyce, recalled in an interview back in 1996 that said his dad couldn't concentrate on writing music in the house because of the noise made by the children. So he walked across the road to the barn to find the solitude he needed to write. Nell McKee, a retired educator who lives in the Buchanan area, attended Mount Carmel Baptist Church where Fisher Boyce was a deacon and song leader when the song was written. She's now in her 90s and Nell McKee still attends the same church and recalls that Boyce would sing the lead part and his wife would sing the harmony in her clear alto voice. Fisher and Cora would sometimes sing the song at church, McKee remembers. Cora would weep every time they sang together. She was very proud of her husband for writing that song. This version for choir is by Keith Christopher, beautiful star of Bethlehem. Thank you. 
so much. The conductor of the Ukrainian Republic Choir, Alexander Koshets, commissioned composer Mykola Leontovich to create the song Carol of the Bells, based on traditional Ukrainian folk chants. The resulting new work for choir, called Shchedrik, was based on four notes Leontovich found in an, in an anthology. The original folk story related to the song was associated with the coming New Year, which in pre-Christian Ukraine was celebrated with the coming of spring in April. The original Ukrainian title translates to the generous one, or is perhaps derived from the Ukrainian word for bountiful, shchedry, and tells a tale of a swallow flying into a household to proclaim the bountiful year that the family will have. When Ukraine became Christian, the holiday with which this melody became connected was Malanka, the eve of the Julian New Year, which in our Gregorian calendar is January 13th and 14th. The Ukrainian National Choir gave this song its U.S. premiere at Carnegie Hall to a sold-out house on October 5th, 1921, 101 years ago. Contrary to the popular legend that the renowned American choir director, Peter Wilkowski, was in the audience that night, it turns out he was only 11 years old at that time, so it appears that he later really heard this Ukrainian tune 15 years afterwards in 1936. He was the conductor of the choirs for the NBC Symphony, which was broadcasting over the radio at the time. And they had an upcoming concert that featured a high school choir, and Wilkowski needed a short number to round out that program that the choir could do. He was aware that the kids wouldn't be able to learn Ukrainian in the time they had to prepare. So he wrote new lyrics in English and introduced his version called Carol of the Bells to holiday audiences over the radio. It was a big hit. American recordings by various artists began to surface on the radio in the 1940s. The song gained further popularity when it was featured in television advertisements for Champagne in the 1970s, which some of you may remember. Carol of the Bells has been recorded in over 150 versions. It has a quick tempo and is of short duration. So, alert your ears. Hark, how the bell.
uh, conquering some of this music, which is quite difficult. If you if you came to a rehearsal in the first or second or third or maybe even the fourth week, you might think, are they going to learn this music? <laughs> and they persevered, and they did in fact learn the music, and they made it ready to perform tonight. So I'm super super proud of them. Most of them I met during the pandemic via Zoom. I was just beginning to be involved in this organization, and we couldn't meet in person, and so we made arrangements to meet almost every day of the week in some fashion via Zoom, and I would see all of their faces on the grid, and over the course of two years of meeting that way, I sort of feel like I got 200 new friends. And it was such a joy to finally get to meet with them in person in three dimensions and see them in real life after having seen them on the screen for two years. So I'm grateful to you all for, for hanging in there when we couldn't meet in person. And it's such a big deal to be able to meet in person. Again, I'll never forget, never take that for granted again. Uh, one of my dear friends is here tonight. She's a professional colleague. She sings for a living uh, with the Chicago Symphony Chorus and Chicago A Cappella and is a music teacher. Uh, Carrie Plackey Ding Lawson sitting right over there. Just raise your hands so they can see you. The, the reason I'm mentioning her is for decades, her mom has been going to her concerts. But tonight, she's coming to her mom's concert. Because her mom can play. I thought that was kind of neat and worth mentioning. At the piano, we have Jeff Poindexter. How about a hand for Jeff? Jeff and I met in 2009 when we were working on an album project for a big church where he was the piano player. We spent, I don't know, a year making a record. And since that time, Jeff has become one of the staff accompanists at Roosevelt University. He accompanies all kinds of ensembles and coaches, singers in all styles. He does music direction and keyboard playing for musical theater productions. And we're lucky to have him here tonight. He's going to be featured on this next piece.
what you're hearing and you would like to sing with us, we would love that. Registration for our spring choirs is now open on our website, soundsgoodchoir.org. And one of the best things is that we have, wait for it, no audition. Isn't that cool? No audition. Hey, choir, what did I say? No audition. It's true. Come join us. Here's the scoop. Starting at the end of January, beginning of February, we have rehearsals for our next session. In Arlington Heights, we have rehearsals right here in this building on Wednesday afternoons. Our 15-week spring session is called Overflowing Hearts and features inspiring music from around the world, from gospel music to a Ukrainian folk song, from the Carpenters to even a movement from the Four Requiem. Great stuff. If you are in this situation or know someone who is, we have two choirs that serve people with early stage memory loss and their care partners. Our dementia-friendly Evanston Choir and our Good Memories Choir on the Gold Coast serve those populations and they sing exactly the same music that the other choirs do. All in all, the Sounds Good Choir organization offers eight Chicago area choirs in the city and suburbs, so find a convenient location near you if Arlington Heights is in your home area. We also have online rehearsals on Friday mornings led by the amazing Paul Langford. So even if you're not in the Arlington Heights Choir, you get to hang out with Paul online and rehearse with him once a week, as many, many people do all the time. Concerts will take place in late April and early May, and since all of our choirs learn the same music at the same time, you can sing in as many performances as your schedule allows, and we are the beneficiaries of that tonight, as many of the people here on stage have come from other locations. As we said, there's no audition, so jump on in. Just visit our website at soundsgoodchoir.org, and we look forward to seeing with you very soon. Our final selection tonight is a medley. Actually, the title is A Wreath of Carols by the American composer and arranger Andy Beck. The four carols presented in rapid succession are I Saw Three Ships, Clean Glückchen Clean, O Christmas Tree, and Deck the Hall. Thank you so much. We want to thank you for taking the time out of your busy holiday season to be with us for our concert today. My name is Jonathan Miller, and on behalf of the whole Sounds Good Choir organization, we wish you and yours happy holidays and a joyous new year.